First, give an honor to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hey guys, this is Sweet Holy Justice, and today I will talk to you guys about handling quarrels the biblical way. So my scriptural references come from Leviticus, Judges, and Matthew. Leviticus 19, verse 17, easy to read version. Don't secretly hate any of your neighbors, but tell them openly what they have done wrong so that you would not be just as guilty of sin as they are. My first point is not to let your anger boil into hate. The scripture says that we have to be upfront with each other when we have issues. Another thing, we can't let our issues um, anger us and let that anger turn into hatred because when we have hatred in our hearts we become just like a murderer and the bible says we are murder murderers if we have hatred in our heart and if we have that then we would go to hell my next point don't keep it bottled in don't keep the problem a secret from the person tell them what's wrong a person can't fix a problem unless they know what it is and it's not fair for you to be angry for to some angry at someone for something that they did, especially if they didn't even know it. One thing I've noticed that causes discord in families is secret hatred because you'll be angry at somebody for something they did, yet you won't say anything, and then yet you get angrier and angrier, and it turns into hatred and it pulls families apart. People can't read your mind, so they don't know if they have to stop or if they're doing something that takes you off, you have to say something to them. And if you don't, then you're partially responsible for the issue. My next scripture comes from Judges 8 verses 1 through 3. The men of Ephraim were angry with Gideon. When they found him, they asked, Why did you treat us this way? Why didn't you call us when you went to fight against the Midianites? But Gideon answered the men of Ephraim, I have not done as well as you. You people of Ephraim have a much better harvest than my family, the Abiezers. At harvest time, you leave more grapes in the vineyard than my family gathers. Isn't that true? In the same way, you have a better harvest now. God allowed you to capture Orb and Zeb, the leaders of Midian. How can I compare my success with what you did? When the men of Ephraim heard Gideon's answer, they were not as angry as they had been. And from this scripture, I want to point out that you need to get an understanding of the situation. Sometimes it helps to find out why the person did what they did. Having a complete understanding of the problem will help you solve it. The person might have had a good reason of doing what they did, like doing the wrong thing for the right kind of reasons. You see this example in Gideon, not the wrong thing for the right reasons, but the fact of getting a clear understanding will help lower the um, the anger levels and help people calm down. When the men of your friend asked Gideon, why did you do it? And he told them they understood um, why he did what he did and they weren't as angry at him as they were before. My next scripture is Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 through 24, easy to read version. So what if you are offering your gift at the altar and remember that someone has something against you? Leave your gift there and go make peace with that person. Then come and offer your gift. My next point is that alts puts you at a standstill with God. Don't get me wrong, God always loves you, but you would not be able to come to God with gifts. And I mean, um, by gifts, I mean prayer, praise, singing, worship, you know, things that are pleasing to God. And this scripture tells us to leave our gifts at the altar and go make things right with that person, or at least try to. And even if they don't accept our apology or things can't get worked out, you would have done your part. And at the end of the day, you don't need to be holding any grudges against someone else either. We need to have a clear conscience and forgive or else we can't get into heaven. 
So the next scripture comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. Amplified version, the class, classical version. If your brother wrongs you, go and show him his faults between you and him privately. If he listens to you, you have won back your brother. But if he does not listen, take along with you one or two others, so that every word may be confirmed and upheld by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he pays no attention to them, refusing to listen and obey, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a pagan and a tax collector. And one thing I wanted to mention is not to spread the issue behind someone's back. Unless you've already spoken to the person privately on the issue, you should not be going around and telling everyone how bad the person is or what they've done, especially if the person doesn't even know it. When you talk about the person behind their back, then you are being unfair to them. At least you should give them a chance of fixing the problem instead of making them the villain in everyone's eyes. And the only time you should involve others is, you know, if you're trying to fix the conflict and if they won't listen. And here's my next point, what to do if they don't listen. And I think this issue right here of them not listening or getting angry or whatever is what keeps us, makes us keep our mouth shut in the first place and not state the issue. The only time you should get others involved is when the person won't listen after you have come to them about the issue privately. As you saw in Matthew chapter 18 verse 15 through 17. And there will be times when someone wrongs you and they know what they did was wrong and they still won't listen. And there have been times when this has been us as well. But as Christians, it's our job to make sure that we are not the problem. And if we do cause a problem like that, then we must leave our gift at the altar and go fix it. Fix, fix, fix the, the thing that that person has against us and make it right with them. We have to be humble and approachable. But... When a person refuses to listen to you privately, then you go get someone else who is trustworthy and honest, and you can get more than one person. And um, you need to get someone who is not going to spread your business like, ooh, guess who I saw? This person and that person, they got to fight about this and this and this. You don't need that. So get a reasonable, honorable, respectable person to sit in on it, a mediator. And if that person won't listen to them and you, then you get the church. And if that person just, you know, has no respect for God and does not care, then you just cut them off. And or, or distance yourself from them. We need to be willing to let go of some relationships. So, like I said, be willing to cut your losses. Sometimes you have to end friendships and distance yourselves. And I know this is harder said than done, especially if you're dealing with a family member or someone close to you. And in some cases, you can't cut that person out of your life. You simply have to ask God to forgive, help you forgive the issue and help you get over it. But especially with dealing with people, you know, um... I can understand if it's your boss and if you address the issue, he'll probably fire you, especially if you have a mean boss, but you still shouldn't hold that against him. You should forgive him, even if he is a bad person and just ask God to help you and help change his heart. But with family members and friends, there is absolutely no excuse. And, you know, let's talk about in cutting someone off. Like, if you have a best friend that keeps stealing your money or slandering and you come to um, that person about it and they won't stop and they're just doing this just to hurt you, well, then you have to realize that that person is better out of your life because they're causing you and maybe even your loved ones nothing but harm. And at the end of the day, we have to ask God who should be in our lives and who should not be in our lives. And then ask God how to fix it, how to go about cutting that person off or distancing them. And God will um, lead you into the right way. And, you know, some people are in our lives for a season. And when they hurt you intentionally for evil reasons, it doesn't mean they've let you down. It just means that their season is over in your life. My next 
is uh, my next point is to state the problem and don't be extra and what i mean by extra is insults you don't have to insult one insult someone to get the point across just state what you mean don't say you good for nothing son of a gun that has nothing to do with the issue just state i saw what you did back there or and, and still ask why why did you say that or when you do things like that it hurts my feelings or whatever the issue is my next point is not to let excuses talk us out of doing the right thing and like i said i can understand if it's your boss or whatever but if it's your close family members and friends then um there's no excuse go ahead in fact you will have more arguments because the closer you are the more you might argue because you're more comfortable around each other but you know if you say well they won't listen or they'll just get mad at me if i say anything and if the problem's serious well things will continue to escalate and get even worse and there will eventually be a wedge drawn between you and if they don't listen, don't care, if they get mad, you would have done your part at the end and you would not be held responsible for the fault. Like I said, regardless if you can talk to the boss or, or anyone else, people you can't talk to, you still have to forgive them and ask God to help you have a forgiving heart, especially with individuals that are, you know, difficult to work with. Anyways, this is the end of my video, and I leave with you this. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7. And I say this because fights and struggles and quarrels among each other, among each other are, it's just another attempt of Satan to keep you from entering the kingdom of heaven. And, um, you know, please subscribe if you haven't, and please give this video a like. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you all, and I will pray for you always. May God bless you and keep you.